hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel dense duke is my name if you're new here please ensure you subscribe now today i'm back again with another video talking about how to construct a raised goat structure and as you can see in my background i have some of my colleagues uh we're trying to build a raised structure goat structure of about 200 goats now this structure is going to be about uh 20 feet by 40 feet and that's going to be raised and i'll be taking you through all the processes that are taken when you are actually constructing a raised goat structure so stick around if you're new and sure that you subscribe don't forget we started up sungura house a place where you can eat all your rabbit meat and we are located in bokoto along uh you know bokoto kisasu road just after the traffic lights as you head to kisasu it's about 40 meters away from the traffic lights so you can call on my number on the screen if you need directions so among the things you will need you will need a square this one to ensure that things are in place again tape measures are a must you will need a hammer uh you will need these boso you know uh, for cutting the timbers you will need a panga you will need something like this i don't know what this is called in english but yes it's used for uh, digging these particular holes you will equally need something like that you can also get some gumboots because while constructing it is very important that you keep uh, safety then material you will need some iron sheets you will need uh, some chain link uh, for the structure and then you will need some of these poles and timbers as well now these timbers for the floor we shall be using six by two why we use it is because they are a little bit stronger than other timber uh, measurements on the market then you will also need those poles now we use eucalyptus because eucalyptus is a little bit strong it can overstand uh, uh, some of the harsh conditions like urine water uh, termites among others but even then those particular poles we shall treat them with uh, some uh, oils here and there we shall use a black cavera i hope i'll also uh, show you that process as well we shall need uh these are called uh kirudu in uganda i don't know how they call them in your country but this is how they look like and how wide they are these are the ones that we are going to put on the sides again you will need uh nails you will need uh nails both for roofing and these other small small works so please let's continue with the explanations like i told you i have one of my technical guys here his name is muhere zasulaiman and he'll be taking us through some of the processes that we've already uh seen on ground and explain why each and everything is very important you're welcome to my cha channel well, thank you mr Dio. how are you today i'm good say hello to the viewers uh, hello to the viewers i'm here as fly man so today i want uh viewers watching us to understand a few processes a few steps that are involved when you are constructing a goat structure first of all uh i see holes being dug or already dug here please explain to us the importance of this or uh, the process uh, uh, these holes you see here we have to, to place our poles eh? the poles will be raining up on those holes we are digging they are two feet down to to to, to provide the strength of the, uh, the structure okay so you're saying if somebody is is, is digging uh, the holes they must be at least two uh, meters two, uh, two, feet, two feet yeah uh, down, down. Mm. okay to give the strength to uh, the poles yeah to the point the structure also okay mm. i also see three lines of poles or holes being dug yeah. what's the importance of those uh, the, the, this one is the witness uh, lane mm. yeah okay where, where the the crossings will be passed you pass this this side mm. then this hole mm. also will, will, will determine the, the strength of the the structure okay so, yeah the the, the 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 other ones are the bases eh? mm. the, the other lane and this one this one okay yeah three. so it's a little bit sunny but yes we shall work under no circumstance under no condition shall we stop come rain come sunshine we shall work now in my background as you can see we are done with digging the holes they are ready and now we are trying to prepare the poles as you can see as well uh to be erected now the next process that i'm going to take you is 
how do you erect those uh, those poles what are the things you're supposed to do to the poles among many others i'll be explaining that cavera you're seeing in the background somewhere around uh, here and then something around here that that um that jerry can what is in in that jerry can and how is it supposed to be used so that is the black cavera that we use uh that we put on the poles to help avoid termites and water and water now this is called wood preservative as you can see it's black in color so every time you're constructing a structure ensure that these are the first things you apply to the uh, to the pole now we use this brush uh, let me show you the brush that we use we use this brush here then we put uh, this wood preservative in like a benson and then we just apply onto these poles like so that's how you apply uh, the wood preservative like i said earlier you smear like three feet uh, from the ground and that's the same area where we're going to put the other dpc it's called dpc finally we got we, we get the name so we're going to apply it here after we've finished applying the wood preservative So this is how our day one has gone. We started by digging some holes and we've erected a few poles. So tomorrow we shall erect more poles and then eventually have uh, our bed here where we shall put the timbers on which the, the floor will be made. So this is our second day. This is how far we've gone so far. We've erected all the poles and now we are working on the pillars in the middle before we start uh, laying our floor, our slatted floor. So this is how uh, we stand so far. Very incredible work here. Now these two poles that you're seeing we are erecting are supposed to uh, support the apex of the house where the ridges go and make a sort of a curve to enable what uh, rain water to flow easily on the edges so this is how big the structure is and this is how far we've gone i'm still here we are still building so this is another step towards making the 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 floor as you can see we are trying to uh, level everything to ensure that they move smoothly yep so i'll be updating you on every step that we take so this is our next step we are trying to assemble these uh, timbers the ones that are going to make the slated floor uh, we are about to have them you know fitted in here so that our goats can enjoy the raised structure properly now something i did not tell you a little earlier i think uh, i'm gonna show you is that this is our our raised structure uh this side of the structure has been raised roughly around four feet this other downer side has been raised roughly around five feet the di the, the difference in uh the raising is because we wanted to have a flat floor you know a leveled ground you know so this the land wasn't leveled it had some sloping you know um, uh, uh, it has some slope so we had to find ways of actually having this floor of ours balanced so that's why we have a difference of here we have about four feet while this other side we have about five uh, five feet high from the ground okay as you can see we are almost getting done with the roofing as well uh we are we are trying to put those poles but for now the main thing that is happening is that we are trying to assemble these uh we are going to use iron sheets to have them uh, you know fixed and fitted properly uh, with no problems at all one huge mistake that a lot of 
farmers a lot of builders out there make when they're building or constructing a raised goat structure is that they do not raise it enough to be able to serve the purpose for which it was intended as you can see i'm here a little bit squatting i could mean to you know raise a little bit and as you can see i'm able to sweep all through because we raised it enough now if you don't raise it enough it's gonna be a little bit challenging for you to clean this goat pen as you can see this is how long we've elevated it so the next time you construct please ensure that uh, you make it happen the only difference now is that uh, this structure is a little bit pricey uh, for those of you who don't know its importance uh, let nobody tell you that raising or not raising are the same no it's not the same raising a goat structure for uh, the goats helps you in so very many ways i have a video and I, to I told you about the importance of actually having a raised structure so go to my youtube channel and by the way don't forget to subscribe so this is our day four this is how our structure looks like we are almost getting done and i'm gonna take you around to show you some of the few activities that we've been able uh, to do and of course i'm combining this with day three activities and then day four activities as you can see the structure is almost done just remaining with a few little other things uh take for example the exercising ground and then uh, fencing down there now uh on the sides what we did is we applied the chain link so the importance of using this chain link is to provide for enough aeration for our goats remember goats chicken rabbits and mostly all other animals require aeration uh, to remove the excessive ammonia from their structures so that's why we used that but also if you realize we covered half of it with a at least three set of timbers now that is just to uh, create uh, some strength on this particular one but also to uh, to prevent them from excessive uh, maybe coldness and all that uh, during times of the night if you care to sit down we also covered our poles for about four meters with uh, wood preservative now that still is uh, a plus for us because we are trying to deal with the termites as much as we can as you can see all poles have been smeared with our wood preservative for at least uh four, four to five feet uh from the ground now in a, in 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 a, in in a more serious scenario this place would have probably been covered with maram maram is very good for uh, this area because it helps in in taking in the excessive water but also the urine that will be uh, dropped by the goats now this area could also be ply cement so that when you're sweeping or cleaning it it becomes a little bit easy but nonetheless if you don't want it's still okay this is how our poles are looking like now i'm going to take you inside so that you can see some of the things that we did from the inside so please stick around so this is how our inside of our structure looks like and i'm going to explain majority or most of the things in here and why or give you the reasons as to why we decided to do them the way they've been done okay our structure is almost done like i told you and it's looking extremely beautiful as you can see it's wide enough to accommodate 200 goats now i'm going to explain why we need these uh divisions uh why this pole is here why what is there is there and so forth and so on so to start with um the importance or the real reason behind making a raised structure is we want to allow for as much droppings to fall down as possible now there are some farmers out there who do construct raised structures and then they do not leave this opening here now this opening is very crucial very very important because then it serves the purpose for which the structure was constructed for okay if you don't leave that spacing that spacing you can just probably uh, try like this uh, big thumb 
if it fits exactly that's the kind of uh, uh spacing we are living today okay this nail or rather chain link comes from down all the way up to the roof okay so even if the gods came here you know gods are a little bit funny this is how strong our chain link is okay um this is how big actually the structure looks like maybe let me stand in one corner and i show you how big so it comes all the way from here to there and as you can see 200 gods are actually going to be filled in here now these separations here sorry for the clothes those are some of the clothes because my people were staying here for the meantime as we're doing the construction now this is our one of the doors this leads us to the uh, kids this is where the kids are going to be staying we created a separate room for them because we don't want kids to mix with the entire population otherwise you risk losing some of them this other separation is for our males for the bucks okay uh we can have one or two in case they are polite enough to stay together and as you can see we've as well used some chain links in here so this brings us to, to yet close to our end but before i do that let me show you what is happening outside here now this is our exercising ground that's how big it is or it's gonna be and as you can see my people have already started fencing it off properly we do this carefully to ensure uh, maximum strength and longevity as you can see one of them is actually applying uh wood preservative on the wood so that we avoid termites as well now general rule of basis for having an exercising ground is to ensure that you clear it as much as you can so that we do not have any weeds here and there and as you can see in this there are a couple of weeds but all these have been cleared and we are going to remove them before we introduce our goats in this particular uh, section we're going to talk to mr muhereza uh, to explain to us exactly why they are fencing down here with chain link and why it is actually very important uh, good morning viewers uh, we are fencing here this is exercising ziad after the ghosts are, are taken out they are living here until they are taken the period uh, this is the exercising ziad then we are facing this side to prevent them to go the other side uh, the other side inside the the house and that's why we are fencing this this perimeter okay uh, so you got it just to explain or elaborate a little bit more uh this is this is our day five and these are some of the activities we are trying to create an exercising ground it's very important for goats to have an exercising ground where they kind of rest they kind of feed this is where they are going to be uh you know relaxing when they are from the fields or when they are just relaxing on any cold day but also something very interesting this chain link here i don't know if you're able to see it properly as you can see this is our under structure and this is where the droppings are going uh, to be so it is very important that since you have done a raised structure to prevent goats from mixing with the droppings it is also very important to protect them from underneath this structure because if you don't do this the goats are gonna go down there and then again mix with uh the droppings and the urine something that again this structure is supposed to help you with so in case you don't do this you will have wasted your time wasted your resources and everything uh, on this structure for nothing because the goats will still be going uh, underneath also here uh, on the exercising ground, we try to kind of uh, have the chain link. This is the chain link that we're going to use here. We have about a couple of them. Now, as you can observe, we've kind of dug a trench. Now, that trench is supposed to uh, take in uh, roughly around a few inches of the chain link so that the chain link is strong enough. You know, these goats are, uh, are a bit uh, playful and 
they want to rub themselves around anything that can give them comfort so with this trench no matter how much or many times they try to rub themselves on the uh on the on the chain link the place will be as strong as we wish it to be otherwise if you don't do that then it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to actually maintain this exercising ground now the exercising ground somebody would ask how big should it be well it should be at least twice the number or twice the length and the width of the structure now remember in our initial com com um, a statement i said that this structure is supposed to raise roughly around 200 goats now if you have 200 goats in that structure it means you need equally enough space which we've tried to create here we had initially created some small space but when we realized that it was small we had to increase as you can see still you follow the same procedure of having uh, treating your poles and then applying those uh, polythene or black coveras to ensure uh, longevity so unlike my structure that has about two doors one this side and another the other side for this structure we decided and chose to have one door which is this one and here we're trying to build ladders as you can see we've already started erecting some poles so let uh, mr mahera tell us why do we have uh, one door on this structure uh, okay. one door uh, normally those goats uh, the normal goats uh, they choose one door to mm. use if you put two doors the other side and the other side they will find that you have chosen one side where they will pass daily so we have decided to build one door then we put two ladders connecting at the door at the door okay cool you'll be seeing the ladders here uh, after being erected for anybody intending to build this structure ensure that you use strong poles okay big strong pole so that you don't weaken the surface the bottom of the structure remember the weight of the goats is going to 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 to, to stand upon these you know poles so after six days of serious work serious construction this is how our structure looks like i'm gonna go a little bit closer to it and show you inside how everything looks like after completion so come with me let's see what we have today this is our gate that is going to help us um, close here to enable goats to stay inside as you can see it has been made out of wood and here is our structure this here is our our ladder or these are our ladders uh, we have two sides but all connecting to one door as you can see i'm trying to move up and boom this is how it all looks like and finally we are done with this our capacity of 200 goats we've built 20 by 40 feet in length and width respectively so guys don't forget to give me uh those jobs when you need anything to do with construction of goat pens chicken pens uh rabbit structures uh, rabbit cages a mank many other things my name is dennis duke don't forget to go to bukoto and eat some rabbit meat until then it's a goodbye <laughs>